Hello and welcome to my first ever Q&A video. So a few weeks ago now I asked people to send in the questions and I'm going to get through as many of them as I can. Now I had far more than I expected so thanks to everyone that sent the question in. If yours isn't read out today don't feel bad about it, it's just I'm going to do as many as I can. But I did have dozens and dozens of them which I didn't expect at all, I thought I might get three or four. So I don't know how long this video is going to be but I thought well I've got a bit of spare time today. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. So here we go, let's get straight into it. So the first question was from Karen and she asked, um, my question for you is when you deal with an anxious student, how do you help them overcome any anxieties they have? Did you have them while you were learning? Well, the best way to deal with nerves, I find, is simply to teach people properly. Now, I know that might sound a bit daft, but I think so many people are nervous because they've never actually had things explained to them properly. And loads of times when people come to me for lessons, they say, my last instructor never explained that, or I never knew about this. Loads of instructors seem to get in the car and just say, right, turn it on, press the pedal down, put in one, bring the pedal up. You don't actually know what you're doing. And I find that's what um, a lot of why a lot of people are anxious. I find if you teach people to drive properly, you very rarely ever get nervous pupils. And those that are nervous tend to lose their nerves quite quickly. Now, I will be doing a video in the future all about this. I'm going to do one about driving test nerves and driving lesson nerves. I have had some extremely nervous people, some who are so bad. Now, I've had people throw, throw up in the car, be stick in the car because they're so nervous. I've had people who burst into tears because you're doing a three-point turn. Yeah, you're just turning the car around in the road and they start screaming and crying and saying, no, I'll never do it. It's worth doing a video about that on its own. So thanks for your question, but um, yeah, I'll be answering that in more detail in the future. As for the other part, did I have anxieties when I was learning? Uh, no, <laughs> I absolutely loved my driving lessons. I used to be sitting by the window of my house and as soon as the instructor came around the corner, I'd run out the front door and I'd be trying to pull him out of the car to what I couldn't wait to get driving. I loved it. <clears throat> and I always loved driving from the time I first began. Um, the first time I actually drove wasn't um, on my first driving lesson. That's worth going into in the future in more detail. Somebody now might ask me that question, I don't know. I haven't read these questions through, like I say, I'm just reading them now for the first time. So maybe someone's going to ask me about when was the first time I drove, I don't know. But anyway, thanks for your question. And let's go on to the next one. So next question. Now I'm doing this on his phone, so I've just got to wait for it to load. It's quite slow because I don't know why it's quite a good phone, but anyway, the connection's quite slow. So the next question is from Aidan. Um, so I'm only reading out people's first names because I don't know if you want me to read your whole name. But Aidan asked me, um, uh, yep, yeah, he's saying thanks for making the videos. Yep, yeah, that's all good. People are often paranoid about crashing before starting the lessons. Have you ever had a people crash during a driving lesson? What's something you can tell people to not worry about crashing? Um, now, I did have a very quick read through some questions before I began. I know I just said that I didn't, but I had a very quick skim through them. And I noticed one of the most common questions I got asked was, um, have I ever had a crash with a learner? I think pretty much everybody asked me, apart from the last person I just did their question. I think everybody asked me, have we ever had a crash with a learner? Well, the answer is yeah. I've had about 10 that I can remember. Now, that might sound bad, but I'm just being honest with you. Um, every crash I've ever had has been the same thing. You pull up or you're sitting still like I am now, and somebody just drives straight into the back of you. Loads of people just think that learners can drive, and they don't understand that learners can't drive. And they pull up behind you, the lights go green, they move off, smash straight to the back of you. And they get out and say, why didn't you go? Because it's a learner, they're learning how to drive. And it's always their fault. If you go in the back of someone, it's your fault. And they come out with all these excuses about, oh, it's not fair, you were learned, you didn't go, blah, blah. That's just the way it is. If you go in the back of someone, it's your fault. If you're driving behind a learner, be careful. I always say to my pupils, keep way back from a learner. Don't ever get anywhere near a learner. Learners can slam the brake on for no reason whatsoever. They just panic, slam the brake on and do an emergency stop. Yeah, I've had, um, I don't know, about 10 accidents over the last 13 years. Or 10 collisions, you're supposed to say, not accidents. Um, the theory is there's no such thing as an accident because it was caused by somebody doing something wrong, which very often is a person behind us too busy talking on the phone and driving in the back of us. I've had that one quite a few times. If you wonder why I hate people driving on the phone so much, 
um, you wait till you've had a few of them crash into you and then they get out and say, oh, well, I was on my phone, it was urgent, I had to talk to my wife. Yeah, and they've just ring your car off because they were too busy nattering to their wife about X Factor or some rubbish like that. Anyway, yeah, I have had accidents. I think every instructor I know has had um, accidents. If any instructor out there hasn't had a car crash, where well, you're going to. <laughs> um, they're either lying or they're not very experienced. It's to say they've never had car crashes. We've all had crashes. I've had mirrors smashed off. I've had cars ridden off, I've had cars pushed off the road going into lampposts. I've had really bad accidents, but that's worth doing, I think, in a different video. So yeah, um, what's the other part of your question, sorry? What's something I can tell people to not worry about crashing? Well, you should worry about crashing. If you're not worried about crashing, you shouldn't be on the road. <laughs> um, if you crash, you could die. So I don't know what I can say to stop people worrying. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you apply the rules properly, you won't crash. I suppose that's the best thing to say. At least if you do crash, it won't be your fault. Although that's not much consolation if you're dead. But anyway, I will come back to that in a future video. And I know I often say that, but I'm, I'm just so busy, I don't have a lot of time spare to make these videos. I hope people do understand that um, these videos take a long time to make. It's not simple as just getting in the car, pressing record, and that's it. It takes ages to set the cameras up in the car because they're not always in the car. It also takes hours and hours of editing and hours to put them on YouTube and it's a long process which again I'll be doing in a future video uh, to show you behind the scenes. Um, the next question is from Kira and he says what's the worst experience I've had while driving? Um, that's a good question, I'm glad someone asked that. A few years ago now, it was a Sunday morning and I'll never forget this. I hadn't been driving that long, if I remember. I don't think I was an instructor at the time. I think it was before I became an instructor. I went out on a Sunday morning, um, and all I was going to do was fill up with fuel. So there was no real big reason to go out. I could have done it, done it the next day. But I wanted to go out and fill up with fuel. And as I came out of my house, I think I'd forgot to lock the front door or something. Yes, yeah, so I walked back to the front door and went, went back to the car. So I was delayed by about 10 seconds. When I was on the way to the petrol garage, um, if you want to look up this road, it's called Lifford Lane. I've actually done a video about this before, the one about Dan just driving. I was driving on Lifford Lane and I was heading towards a humpback bridge. It's like a big hill goes up and you can't see what's coming over, you, over the other side. This absolute moron in a Subaru Impreza came flying over the, the bridge on the wrong side of the road, flying towards me mid-air. He was doing about 50 to 60 miles an hour over 30 mile an hour bridge. He came flying towards me, landed on the floor, skidded in front of me and went zooming past. I wasn't too surprised when about three seconds after and then my police car was chasing after him. So he was obviously someone who stole in the car and he was racing it around. If I hadn't have forgotten to lock my front door, I'd have been dead. I would have had a big Subaru Impreza fly through my windscreen and kill me. And that made me really quite shook up. I never get shook up driving. I've always loved driving, as I said, when I had my lessons, I loved it. But that really shook me up. And I had to pull over and just, just have a few minutes not, not driving. That was horrible. That was the worst experience I've had when driving. Yes, I've had actual crashes that were probably worse than that. But that was the worst experience I've had in terms of very nearly being killed. You know, if you say, if I'd have been speeding myself, if I'd have been going over the speed limit, I would have been at the wrong part of the road at the wrong time that would have been a massive crash so yeah thanks for your question I didn't really want to remember that but, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for asking that next question on to question four just gonna wait for this to load up um, so this question is from uh, it doesn't actually say the name sorry let me, oh, it does say it's from Daniel and Daniel asks what do you think separates pupils who can learn to drive and those who struggle? Well, there's only one thing that separates those people. People who learn to drive well are the pupils that listen to what the instructor says. This, yet again, is worth doing another video on on its own. So um, thanks to everyone giving me all these ideas for videos. Um, so many pupils just don't listen. And you can tell them something and they don't listen. Like you say to some pupils, press the clutch and they take the handbrake off and you say look in the mirror and they turn the engine on and they don't listen to what you're saying and if you listen to what your instructor says and follow it you'll learn so much more quickly than those that don't I would go as far as to say 
But if you listen to your instructor and follow what they're saying, you can save yourself at least 10 hours of lessons just from listening to what's been said. So I can go over that in more detail, but I want to get through as many questions as I can. Um, he says, for those with difficulties, what techniques do you use to make learning faster and easier for those pupils? Um, that I'm going to go over in different videos because I could spend hours talking about that. When I finally moved house, which should be about, I don't know, not long from now, I'm just looking for somewhere. Um, I'm going to have my proper studio room and I'll have it all set up. And I will be doing videos almost daily because I'll, I'll be coming over from work, setting up the camera. Well, the cameras will be set up in the room already and I'll be recording loads of videos. Um, you're going to see loads more videos coming from me once I've moved house. But yeah, um, I've had a lot going on lately and I just haven't had much time to make videos. Um, so yeah, that's, let's go on to the next question. Question 5 already, I mean I'll, I'll try and do about 10 maybe, I don't know. But I had over, over 20 questions come through which is quite surprising. Some of those I think have got multiple questions in each one. Um, <laughs> this one's from Luke and he says my question is why are you so amazing? <laughs> that's, that's quite a nice, um, nice question, yeah. He uh, says he loves the videos. Keep up the amazing work. Well, yeah, sorry, I can't really answer that. Not really a question, but <laughs> but yeah. Uh, why am I so amazing? I don't know. I just try and do the best I can. But I appreciate the people on my videos. And um, I appreciate people, you know, understanding. I don't always have loads of time to make videos. Um, this is something I do part-time. I would love to go full-time on YouTube. I'd love to be doing videos every day. Um, but unfortunately, the finances don't allow you to do that. Um, you don't earn much money from YouTube videos. I know people think you get thousands, you don't. You earn roughly two pounds per thousand views. So some of my more popular videos, yeah, I've got loads of money from those. Um, that's what's allowing me to buy these cameras and whatever. Um, but yeah, you don't make loads of money, so I'd love to make more videos, but I don't have all the time. Next question is from Tom. So I'm just checking I've got your name. I thought he said Tori, it's Tom. So yeah, Tom says, did you pass your driving test first time? No, I failed my first one. Um, I failed it because I didn't check my blind spot. And I remember there was a car coming down the road I didn't see um, on a corner. I also failed because I remember this woman threw a car door open and I had to swerve around it. And the examiner said, I know you did brake, but I had to brake as well. So unfortunately you failed. I always remember that, exactly where it was. I go past there with pupils now. <laughs> it's quite funny. I tell my own pupils past there. And I'll say, this bloody woman threw a door open there and failed me. That was years ago now. That was what? It was, I don't know how many years. That was years and years ago. So yeah, that's what I failed on. Um, when was it I decided to pursue the career of being a driving instructor? That's quite a common question now. I'm not going to go into all that now because again, yep, yeah, that's a question for another video. <laughs> um, what I'll say is if you go on my website, if you go on firstdrive.com and click on the about section, I think it says about me, it's down the bottom of all the other links, it's in the centre of the three links at the bottom. Um, there is a whole page telling you the story of why I became a driving instructor. I am going to one day do a video on that because I think it will be a really good video. Um, but quite simply I had um, quite a bad instructor, I then had a crash after I passed and that made me want to become <coughs> um, a driving instructor. And he also asked, has the people ever damaged your car? Yeah, I already answered that one earlier on. So a lot of people are asking that question. But yeah, thanks for that question. Let's go on to the next one. Question seven is from Daniel. Um, wasn't it a Daniel before? So she's Daniel H. There might be a few people with the same name. I know everyone, not everyone's got different names. So yeah, he says he's been a fan of my channel since he started learning to drive. But other things got in the way. So I'm just going to pick, just reading through this. Why did I become a driving instructor? And why Birmingham to teaching? Uh, but it's just I live in Birmingham. I actually didn't grow up in Birmingham. I grew up in, um, well I won't say where because that's one of the security questions on my credit cards. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I didn't actually grow up in Birmingham. But I'm not a Brum, I'm not from Birmingham. I just live here but I don't actually come from here. Um, he's mentioned some accents, yeah. Um, I do have an unusual accent because I actually grew up in a very posh part of the country. I used to have a very posh accent when I was a kid. I grew up in one of the most affluent areas of the country, a very uh, rich, posh area. So I do sometimes slip into my old posh accent, uh, but I try and make it more of a, a Birmingham accent because it sounds a bit, a bit better, I think. I don't want to sound like a snob or whatever. Um, 
would I ever consider coming up to Yorkshire to do some drives around the countryside? Yeah, I love going around Yorkshire. I went there. Um, I went to York about 10 years ago now. Um, there was a TV programme being filmed and I went to watch that. And I, I love Yorkshire. York is a, a great place. Um, you didn't know where? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. I was just thinking of the place seven years ago. But yeah, I've been, I've been, I haven't been north that much. I've been around Sheffield, I've been around the Peak District. Um, I don't really go much north, more, much more north than that. But yeah, I would love to go and see the Lake District in Scotland. I'd love to go north, but for some reason I always go south. Um, seems like everything in my life goes south. <laughs> I always seem to go south to Cornwall, but I don't go north much. So yeah, I would love to go there. Maybe I will one day when I get time, maybe when I've moved house. But I'd love to do that. Next question, number eight, is from Adam, um, and he asks, which political party do I support and why? I'm not really into politics. Um, I don't go for that. Sorry if, you, if you're into politics, I don't know, you know, not that I don't like it, but it's not my kind of thing. I don't, um, I don't really believe any of them. Do you? I don't know. <laughs> they all seem to say one thing or do another. I suppose, if anything, I would say... The current government are probably pretty good, the one that got in, was it? See, I don't even know who's in. <laughs> Conservative, that's how political I am. They seem to be doing good. I mean, they seem to want to get people working, whereas Labour seem to want to use to, I don't know, it, it seems odd to me, maybe this is completely wrong, I don't know, maybe I might be totally wrong about this. It seemed like Labour was always about giving people more benefits, whereas Conservatives was more about getting people working. Maybe I'm totally wrong about that, but that's just the way it seemed to me as a complete amateur who doesn't even know who's in charge at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, so sorry I can't answer that question that well, but that's just the way the way I see things. Question nine is from Craig. Um, are instructors allowed to be in the car with the people who's on the driving test? Yep, yeah, we can go with them. I do recommend, and again, I'll be doing a video about this, I do recommend you do go with your people so you have your instructor go with you. Um, and he says, do have to wait anxiously at the test centre uh, with fingers crossed that they come back and the people has passed. Um, I rarely don't go with people. I'd say 9 out of 10 I'll go with people. It's quite rare that I'll wait back at the test centre. But yeah, I'd much rather go with people as you can. The examiners will ask you that at the beginning. They'll say, do you want your instructor to come with you? And I'll thoroughly recommend you do. Um, it can make people feel better. It can make people feel worse, I know. Um... But yeah, I recommend you do take your instructor with you. To me, I mean, if I was going through some kind of training, because well, I do training as well with instructor trainers, I would like to have my training with me. I think it would be nice for them to see what I'm doing, give me some feedback at the end. Question 10 is from Catherine, and she asks, what's the weirdest thing that people's ever done or said on a lesson? Um... <laughs> I've got loads of them I could go over again, I could make a video about that. Um, the weirdest thing, I mean, I don't know if it's the weirdest, but one I mentioned earlier on, when I was doing a three ball, actually no, I'll give you a quite weird one I didn't mention earlier on. I was going to say about the one where the people started crying doing a three point turn, but I do remember one funny thing happened years ago, about ten years ago now. I was teaching his people to drive, and he was a girl, I can't remember her name, um, but it was his girl I was teaching. And we <laughs> we came off a roundabout, <laughs> and she just went the wrong way. All it was, I think we meant. Let me think. She meant to go. We meant to go right, but she went ahead, and it's something a lot of people do on this roundabout because the ahead looks like a right. And I said to her, oh, "We've got the wrong way, no problem." And she just burst into tears and started screaming and crying and saying, "I hate driving. I'll never do. I can't do it." And I said, "Look, you've just gone the wrong way. That's <laughs> that's all." And um, but the funny thing about it was, <laughs> this car coming the other way, this man, <laughs> this man saw what was happening, and I think he thought I was attacking the the people. So he got out of his car and come running, <laughs> running over to the people, saying, "What's he doing to you, love? Are you all right?" And he thought I was attacking him or something. <laughs> and she said, "Oh no, no, I'm all right. He's not attacking me." And it turns out what it was. She'd been working loads of really late night shifts or something like that. And then she was just so exhausted, she turned up for a lesson, having not slept for about two days. <laughs> and it was just the final straw when I said, oh, you've gone the wrong way. You just kind of set her off. You know, she just broke down in tears and this bloke thought I was attacking her. <laughs> we all ended up laughing about it. But yeah, um, that was one 
one, uh, this is from David, and he says, have you ever come close to quitting driving instructing? And if so, what nearly sent you over the edge? I have, I not long ago, thought about quitting. Um, there were many reasons why, but one of the reasons was <laughs> the new 20 mile an hour speed limit. If you don't know, there's a new 20 mile an hour speed limit coming in Birmingham. Um, and driving is just becoming unbearable. I mean, all this stuff about 20 is plenty, and we're saving everyone by making it 20 miles an hour. Loads of instructors just saying, yeah, this is the last straw, I've had enough, I'm sick of these stupid rules, I'm just going to go and drive how I want, I don't care about speed limits, I'm going to do what the hell I want. And this is what these road safety campaigners aren't getting. They go on about how lowering the speed limit is going to help everyone and make it all safer. Do you realise how many instructors you're putting out of business? Do you know how many people are getting so sick of it and thinking, right, you know, I'm not going to stick to 20, in fact, why should I buy the stick to 30? Why should I buy the stick to 40? All they're doing is making everyone go faster, and they haven't got a clue what they're doing, they're making everything worse. And that has made me think about quitting more than anything else, because I'm sick to death of crawling down the road at 20 miles an hour, and the abuse I'm getting from people. And people blasting the horn at me, people shoving their fingers up at me, people coming around to my house and shouting at me on the doorstep, you know, you toss her, why don't you go faster? I'm just doing my job, but unfortunately 20 zones are making it unbearable. So yeah, and that's probably the thing that's made me think about quitting more than anything else. Okay, so next question is, this is question 12, um, from Matthew, Matthew G. And he asked me, have you ever been in a crash? Yeah, I've already answered that one earlier on, so sorry, I'm not going to skip over your question, but um, I've already answered that one a few times ago. Um, have I ever been in a crash myself? So, yeah, I did have one when I was driving. I don't think I'd even been driving about a week or something, I can't remember now. But um, yeah, I had one myself, but all the others were, 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 uh, were with learners. So I'll go on to the next question. I don't want to skip out of yours, make out that I'm not interested in your question, but I've already answered that one earlier on. Um, next question is, what made me want to become, this is from uh, Declan M. He says, hi Paul, what made me want to become a driving instructor? I answered that one earlier on, if you have a look on my website on the about page. Did I just wake up one day thinking I wanted to teach people how to drive? Or was it an ambition that I wanted to do? Well, again, I don't want to skip over your question, but if you have a look on my website, that will answer your question better. Um, it wasn't something I just woke up and decided to do. That's one thing I like to think that makes me a bit different to many instructors. I think a lot of instructors just see an advert in the paper or on a TV ad and think, oh yeah, I'll have a go at that. For me, it's something I really wanted to do. I had a real passion for it. Um, so yeah, I'll go on to the next question, but if you want to find out more about why I became an instructor, have a look on the About page on my website. So our next question is from Connor B. And... This one's a bit hard to read, sorry, because it's all been encoded in funny web code. Um, it says, uh, Thanks for the great content, helping me a lot, because I'm near my test, that's good news. My question is, when I first learned to drive, did I pass first time? Uh, no, I've already answered that one earlier on. So I'm doing these without practice, I'm just reading them straight through. So thanks for your question, but no, I didn't pass first time. I passed second time, um, which was about, I think, a month after my first one. So yeah, thanks for your question. Multiple people might have asked me the same question. I haven't read these through much before. I just had a very quick look through to get rid of any stupid ones or any, you know, spam. Um, next one is from Robert T, who asked me what made me want to become a driving instructor. Again, uh, thanks for the question, but I've already answered that one, so I'll move on. But, um, you know, I don't think I don't appreciate the questions I do. Uh, next question is from... Um... Yeah, it's from Jordan, who's also known as the Gaming Monkey, apparently. Um, <laughs> how, sorry, some people's names are quite weird. I could do an email about it, I mean, a um, video about that. Some of the funny names I've had through emails are quite funny. <laughs> when I meet pupils, <laughs> they're being embarrassed about the name. Anyway, so Jordan asked me, how many, qu how many lessons do you need to, before you do your actual test? And, sorry, I'll ask that again because I messed it up. How many lessons do you need to do before your actual test? And when are you doing four lessons videos with the people? The average people takes about 40 hours-ish. Without sounding like a bad salesman, my pupils pass it about 30 hours because of the way I teach them. But 
that also depends on where you live. If you live in areas like before somebody asked about Yorkshire, it depends where you live. When I used to teach in Cornwall, you could be driving half an hour just to get out of the people's driveway. I had a people who once lived in a farm on the edge of a sea, of the, of the sea on a cliff. And it took us 20 minutes just to get from the farm that they lived in to the main road. <laughs> so it could take a long time. It was a long, long road, massive, ma massive big estate that I lived on. Um, it could take a long time, but 40 hours ish is the average. If you know, if you go to a good instructor who knows what they're doing, you could probably cut it down to 30 odd hours. But it's different for everyone. It can take um, as little as I do. I don't want to say there's little, but it could take fewer, it could take longer. It's up to you. When am I doing my lessons with the people? I am doing that soon. I have got a people who might be watching this video who I am going to do some filming with. I was going to film with a people called Laura and unfortunately what happened is I went to film the first video and because of it, I'd only just got these cameras um, I hadn't got it set up properly so we did the first video <coughs> and um, it didn't come out very well. The lesson was great but the video came out really dark because I got the wrong settings on the camera. So unfortunately, yeah, I should have already done them by now, but um, I will be doing those as soon as I can. I'm probably filming them in the summer with someone. I think from about May I'm hoping to film some of those. Uh, but yeah, thanks for your question. Next question is from Hannah B. And she asks, at the end of 2015 you were absent from YouTube for a while. Would you be able to explain what happened to you? I hope you are okay now. Yeah, that's quite a long story. If you watch the trailer for my YouTube channel, you could probably work it out from there. I did do a video all about that, and I'll probably do another one, because that's a bit out of date now. Um, quite simply, 2015 was a terrible year for me. Um, I won't say exactly what it is now, because otherwise I'll take quite the point of the other video. But quite simply, um, I wasn't very well, and I had quite a few things going on. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't want to be too cryptic, but I had a lot of bad things going on. Some of them were legal problems that I had. Um, I had some legal issues, and I can't tell you what they are. I couldn't tell you what they were, because at the time they were still going through. But yeah, um, let's just say that I had um, more than one accident, and I was ill, and I had something that meant I had to go down the police station and be interviewed about that. But yeah, there will be more details coming about that in the future. I do appreciate that people want to know about that. I have made a video, I'll probably just release it soon, but the thing is, one of the things I said in that video is not actually correct. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll explain that more in the description of that video if I, um, if I, when I get around to releasing it. Next question, there's quite a few questions here. So this person has sent me um, 14 questions, so I do appreciate that. That's um, Joey N. I'm going to pick one of them, Joey, because I can't answer 14 in one go. I will do them in the future, maybe for my next video, but um, my next Q&A video. But yeah, um, I'm just going to pick one at random. I'll have a quick read through and I'll just see which one I think people might want to might want to know about. That's quite an interesting one. I'll read as far as number three. So I'll do all of this, but I'll read down as far as number three. You asked, I think I read somewhere on your website that you're good, quite good with IT and technology. What got you into it in the first place? Um, long story which I'll be doing in my video all about me, that video is going to be probably about two hours long because <laughs> I've got a lot to say as you can tell. Um, when I was a kid I got into computing. Um, we had a computer at home, it was a Commodore 64, one of the first computers ever made. I think it was 1983 or 84 I first used the computer. Um, it's a long story I won't go to now, but I was actually I used to program computers when I was a kid. Um, at the age of 11, I read a book on how to program a computer. And I used to write video games and sell them when I was 11. And I'm quite pleased about that. I don't think many 11-year-olds could program a video game. I mean, nowadays it's different, you know. This was back in the old days. We're talking like the days, you know, the, the Nintendo, the NES, and the, the Sega Mega Drive, and the Commodore Amiga. You know, I used to write games for the Commodore Amiga. I've still got them, actually. That's very interesting. Um, I've got a, a two boxes full of discs. Remember those? Discs. Yeah, <laughs> old-fashioned floppy discs. Um, I've still got, I think, I made, I think I made about seven games. And I've still got the original discs with the original code. But I haven't got a Commodore Amiga. I've often wanted to say, I want to buy an Amiga and put the discs in and just see what the games are like. I'd love to play my old games. I haven't played those games now for about 
20, 20 plus years since I last played those games that I made. Thanks for all the other questions, I will read through those, um, but I just I can't do them all now. Uh, but I do appreciate asking lots and lots of questions, I will get back to those. Uh, next email is from William S. And he says, this is a question, I'm taking a risk by the way, so far I've, I've read out all these questions without even reading them first. <laughs> so I'm taking quite a risk doing this because it could be something stupid. Um, thanks for your question, he says, this is slightly related to driving but I think it's a good question I haven't given my opinion on. Uh, he says, I had my driving test yesterday and it failed because he was too nervous and made silly mistakes like stopping at a green light. I have mentioned that in videos before, I've mentioned people stopping at green lights and people say, oh don't be daft, no one will do that. Well that just proves they do. Um, I've heard calms will stop you being nervous, I suppose you mean those like pills, the sweets you can get. Um, what do you think of calms? I have actually tried those, um, I saw them myself once. I can't say they did a lot for me. Um, not much ever seems to do much for me. I've tried like sleeping pills. I took two sleeping pills once. Didn't do a thing. I didn't even feel tired. And I took another two. I didn't even feel tired. So if ever you're thinking about drugging me with sleeping pills, it's not going to work. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but my body seems to be very resistant to any kind of medicine altogether. Um, I heard they slow down your reactions. What was your experience been from your clients? Um, I do recommend one thing, I don't want to name any brands, because maybe I can get a brand deal going here. No. But there is one energy drink, um, which I actually took before my advanced driving test, and I found it really does work. If you have an energy drink, I felt like pumped up and like I was ready for anything. And my reactions were so much better than normal, and all my, I found everything was better. And afterwards you kind of come down, I've never taken drugs, but I suppose you start taking drugs. You kind of have this energy drink, you get a sudden burst of energy. And then you kind of feel down, but yeah, I recommend energy drinks are quite good for driving tests. Except if like my test center, my test center hasn't got a toilet, that could be a bit of a down if you need a toilet. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I'll have to try that. Maybe I have to buy some calms and try and give them to people, <laughs> sneak them into a drink or something, <laughs> see if it helps. But yeah, I have had people do that. I had somebody once taking something called was it Rescue Remedy or something? I can't remember some kind of spray they had. Um, that didn't work because I failed, but <laughs> never mind. Um, anyway, so yeah, the camera's still recording. So I've been recording for quite a while now. Uh, next question is from... So the name's just coming up. Uh, he doesn't say the full name, he says... Yeah, so he does. Hugh, Hugh R. Sorry, the name's a bit slow to come up. This is a question for your Q&A video. Um, what was the process you took in order to become a driving instructor once off in your school? Good that again is something I've already answered, so thanks for your question, but I will be doing that in more detail in the future. Um, I had to wait years to become a driving instructor because I actually wanted to do it from the age of about 18. Um, but unlike most people who just think, oh, I'll be an instructor, no problem. I had to wait four years. I actually had a calendar I used to mark all the days off. <laughs> I'm probably the only person who's ever done this. I couldn't wait to become a driving instructor. I counted down the days over four years to become an instructor. Uh, why, I don't know. <laughs> but looking back, you know, yeah, I'm glad I did it. Uh, I know I'm joking a bit, but yeah, I'm glad I became an instructor. Um, and it says, P.S. I'm currently learning to drive, and your videos have been amazing in helping me along the way. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Yeah, that's good. That's good news. Always glad when my videos are helping people. Um, next question is from Dan P. Um, what made me want to become a driving instructor? I've answered, but what did you do before? <laughs> what didn't I do before is a bit easier. Um, the drive, being a driving instructor, is the fifteenth job that I had in four years. Yes, I had fifteen jobs in four years. That's well worth doing a video on when I do the About Me. Um, how I managed to do that is something I'm quite proud of. <laughs> how I managed to keep covering my tracks and getting through interviews, having had 15 jobs in four, <laughs> four years. <laughs> I used to be a bit of a rebel, I couldn't stick a job out, but I've been doing this job now for 13 years. So, um, and so yeah. And again, this person, you have asked me... Um, <laughs> You have asked me quite a few questions, one of them I couldn't read out, I would probably get banned from YouTube. Um, 
But <laughs> yeah, thanks for those questions. I will answer those in a future Q&A video or maybe I'll reply by email. Uh, next question is from Jahia M. How much can you make as a driving instructor? Um, it doesn't have to be about me, maybe people I know of. And he says that his instructor has a nice house and she's got an Audi R8 and her husband's an instructor. Uh, also, he's also said in the video, yeah, I mentioned examiners don't earn as much. Um, generally, examiners don't earn as much as instructors, but it depends how good you are as an instructor. Um, if you're not very good, you won't earn much, but you can earn anything from nothing if you're no good. Um, the average instructor gets around, well, fifteen to 20,000 a year-ish, you know, that's after your expenses. But there are instructors who are millionaires. Um, you may know there are one or two instructors who have started up schools, taken on other instructors and are now millionaires. And yeah, you can do that. Um, I've often thought about expanding first drive, you know, taking on other instructors, but I don't know, it's not something I've ever really wanted to do. I could, and yeah, I could make money, but for me, money's not the main thing. I don't go out thinking oh, I'm going to make loads of money today. I think I'm going to go out today and help people learn to drive or be safe on the roads. I don't go out thinking oh, I want to make loads of money. Money's never been the main thing for me. But yeah, um, thanks for your question. And yes, some instructors do have nice cars. There are some instructors with, um, there's one instructor on you had a Bentley. You know, he drives a Fiesta to teach him a course or whatever he had. And he has a Bentley for his own car. Um, I knew one who had a Porsche. And he said, or oh, should I say that? Let's think, should I say that before saying? Yeah, he said for a joke, he used to take good looking girls on his Porsche that he was teaching. I won't name him, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I wouldn't do that in my car. But yeah, he did, he did sort of boast about if I get a good looking girl, I like to take around my Porsche. What does the pass rate, so this is another question from Christopher H. What does the pass rate have to be for drivers wishing to be driving instructors? Um, it doesn't have to be anything. You can be a driving instructor. Um, you just have to have a clean license. You can have three points on your license, but ideally you should have a clean license. Um, you don't have to have any formal qualifications at all apart from a driving license. So, yeah, it's actually quite easy to get it. Well, it's not easy to, to become an instructor. It's easy to start the qualification process. <laughs> Sorry, I've got hiccups. Um, but yeah, not that easy to um, to go through. He did ask me what processes did I need to go through. Um, what do you need to do? That's a huge topic. Thanks for asking. I will be answering that in another video. I know I keep saying that. But I will be doing videos about becoming an instructor. Um, and he also asked, do I accept older drivers that have passed and wish to increase the skills. Yeah, um, I don't discriminate because of age. The oldest person I had was 59. Um, and the youngest I had was what, 17. Uh, so 17 to 59. People's age doesn't really matter. Um, I don't really care if you're 20, 30, 40. If you want to learn, you can learn. There are differences in that. But I should go over that in another video, which I am doing about people's ages. So thanks for that question. Next one, I've only got another three to get three. Next one's from Christopher H. Didn't he ask me a question before? Yeah, he just said sorry for a second email, so I do pay attention. Um, how long have I been driving and what was my driving instructor like? Um, I won't answer that just because I've answered a question for you already, so sorry about that, but I've already answered one question. But um, I will go back over that in my next video, I'll go over some of these again. Um, my next one's from Adam L. And he says, do I support any football teams? If so, which one? I'm not really into football. Um, I used to follow it quite a bit, but what I hate about football comes back to what I said a few minutes ago about money. I'm not really into money and financial things and um, big houses and fast cars. I don't go for that. And what I hate about football is the money, the way that these people, and now I know they've got skill, I'm not saying they've got no skill, but does a footballer deserve, if, you, if you're watching my videos from abroad, Footballers in England earn roughly about the average of around 100 to 200 thousand pounds a week. That's about 200, it's about a quarter of a million dollars, US dollars a week. That's what a footballer earns in this country. I think it's stupid. I mean, what do they do? They run around playing football and they get paid that much money for what? For kicking a ball around. I think I deserve doing that for that much money for what I do. <laughs> the amount of down driving, and you certainly need more skill to be a driving instructor than be a footballer. 
I know you could argue that, but you know, if, I mean, I, was, I could run around and kick a ball. Maybe not as good as some players. Yeah, maybe not. You know, going to be a Ronaldo or whatever, but I don't support football. Um, I do like it. I watch the big games. I World Cup, you know, European. Uh, um, so the Euros are coming up soon this summer, but I don't support a particular team. Um, I don't know who I would if I was going to. I, I mean, I mean, my local team is Birmingham City, and so I suppose I would support Birmingham City. But I don't, you know. I don't really, I don't go for football much. But again, thanks for your question. Um, last question for now is uh, coming up, and this is from. So let's go back to the name. I hope I get a name correct. It looks like Azeri Manid. Azeri Mamid. Sorry, if that's not your name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it says underneath. I won't say the name because I think that might be Sir now, but I don't know. There are two names come up. The other one starts with an R. I think that's your name, but sorry about that. Um, that might just be your email name that I read out, but I won't read the rest out. He said, uh, Sorry if I'm late. What's the best thing to do while waiting at the test centre for your examiner or test to start? That's a good question. I haven't had that one before. The best thing you can do is I find to sit and be quiet. Um, when you go to a test centre, you'll often get instructors, um, instructors that are giving the pupils last minute advice and you know, don't forget this and do this and do this. Whenever I um, go with the pupil, I always just sit quiet like this. And I don't speak because for me, all of the work has been done. If you're needing to, you know, G them up or remind them of things, it's too late. You should have all that done, you know, before you go to your test. So, in my opinion, the best thing you do is sit calmly. I'm talking about calms again. Sit calmly, sit quietly, and wait for the examiner to come out. That's how I find I grow in confidence. So some people like to talk or whatever. I find sitting still, being quiet, and just collecting your thoughts is a good way of doing it. So there you go. Um, I hope that's answered all your questions. There were only a few I didn't do. There were people who asked loads and loads of questions. But I do appreciate those. It's been quite good fun doing this. So if you want to watch more of these videos, let me know. I think this video might be about half an hour long. I don't know. It's going to be quite a long video. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions. If you've got any more, you can email me to questions at firstdrive.com. But for now, that's all. So thanks for watching. There will be more videos coming soon. Just bear in mind, I'm very busy. I know people want to see more videos. I am thinking of doing a new series, which I should be launching a little trailer for soon. It's going to be videos I release every Tuesday. Watch out for those. So, yep, yeah, hope you enjoy my videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the videos, and I'll see you again soon for more videos.